How's it going and welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're gonna be cleaning an indoor and outdoor coil on a Goodman package unit. Let's do some work. This video is sponsored by Subco, the right choice. All right, so whenever you're killing power to a system, you never want to trust that the breakers are actually doing their job. You always want to measure and make sure you don't have any voltage. I always like to check across each hot leg and then also from each leg to ground just to make sure that everything to ground is also dead. On these Goodman package units uh, for the condensing fan motor, they have a junction behind this panel. So you don't have to worry about removing the wires all the way back to uh, the control section. So all you gotta do is just unplug these like so. Now they're not color for color. So just keep in mind, take a picture or just remember which one goes to what. So that looks like a light brown goes to brown, pink goes to purple, and then the black goes to black but that's how you can disconnect it. Now we're ready to go ahead and remove this whole lid and get it um, put over on top of the flashing and then we can inspect everything inside. The first thing I want to do is get rid of all this bulk of leaves so I can really start to clean this whole um, condenser section out and then start uh, washing out this coil. So a lot of this stuff is just do it by hand as long as you can actually get to it. Thankfully on this Goodman you got the big holes to where a lot of this stuff can just get washed out with the hose. When it comes to cleaning the outdoor condensing coil, there are multiple ways that you can go about it. You can wash it from the inside out because technically that probably is the best way because everything is being sucked in this direction. So if you blow, wash it that direction, it's going to be it's probably going to come out a lot easier. Um, but not necessarily it means that's the only way you can do it, right? You could do both ways. Um, if you're going to wash it from the outside, I would recommend that when you're spraying the water, you spray it more at a downwards angle. So anything that's on the surface is just gonna get pushed straight down instead of pushed in. So what I like to do is a little bit of both. I'll start with the outside pushing everything down and getting rid of all the stuff that's right at the base. And then I'll come from the inside and start washing it like that. So this is kind of what it would look like. This coil is not really that dirty. So it's not that big of a deal. But it's good to know the options, right? Depending on how, how bad it is, how dirty it is. So sometimes you really gotta do it thoroughly uh, from both sides. I like to use this coil cleaner here. So it's good for condensers and evaporators. No, uh, Non-rinsing, no odor and it's also safe for food processing. So if you're in the, uh, the kitchen world, commercial world, you can use this, it's safe. But even though it says no rinsing, um, I still rinse it off if I, if I can. To me, it just makes me feel better. So what the foam does, it, once you spray it on there, see how the foam, it basically pulls any dirt out of the coil towards the foam, right? The, the foam pulls it out. That's the job of the actual foam. So what I think is best is not to spray it from far away like this, because you're not really getting good penetration. You want to get up nice and close and really get, get it in there, right? Obviously, 
This is not a dirty coil, so we're not gonna see a lot, but that's how you wanna use the product. You wanna get in there nice and, so it actually penetrates the coil. Look at that, it's actually coming through both sides. So that way it's getting, it's gonna pull anything out of that coil. All right, so when it comes to cleaning the indoor coils, I don't like to use the garden hose just because it has too much water and you just can't control the flow of it and it'll just saturate everything, get soaking wet. So I try not to do that. That's where I like to use uh, this Porta Blaster. This is made by Subco. Um, the way I have it set up is with this little Milwaukee power inverter to where I don't have to worry about running, running an extension cord or anything like that. So that's pretty handy. But what's cool is about this is it has two settings. You have a high pressure and then you also have a low pressure. So the low pressure is what we're gonna use for that indoor coil. And then um, if you didn't have water uh, access to clean your outdoor coil, you could put it on the high pressure and uh, wash your coils that way. You just need a five gallon bucket and you can go to town with this setup, which is pretty cool because it's really small and compact. So. Anyhow, that's what I like to use whenever I'm cleaning indoor coils because, again, you just have more control with the water, the amount of water that you're using, and you're just not making a huge mess. So what I like to do is give it a little rinse off first and then apply some of that coil cleaner. And that's really gonna help grab all the dirt and debris. And get this thing nice and clean. All right, so I'm gonna let that set for a good five to 10 minutes and just really pull everything out of that coil. Then we'll give it a good rinse off. We should be good to go on this coil. So I can start uh, cleaning everything else up, getting the drain line cleaned up. Because while you're down here, it's a good time to clean the, the actual pan on, on both sides of the coil to make sure it's perfectly clean. But everything's... Uh, I think it's looking good so far. All right, so this is looking a lot better now. Got the pan down there all cleaned out nicely on both sides. So we're in good shape. So yeah, this little Porta Blaster, it comes in handy. For situations like this, um, ductless mini splits on indoor uh, high walls and things like that, it's very nice to have this set up. Or if you're just trying to clean a coil and you don't have any water available, uh, like on a commercial application or something like that, it's just nice to have something like this as an option. All right, so we got condenser coil cleaned, evaporator coil cleaned. I'm just gonna give this all a good wipe down and I think we're gonna be in good shape and we can get, get this thing put back together.
All right, this thing is looking so much better now. So I like to go ahead and wash the entire shroud, maybe a little bit of the siding around it just to make sure everything looks really clean. Uh, I'll scrub the seal tight, the drain line, basically everything just to make it look as clean as possible. Um, that's just something that I like to do, kind of just take that extra step to make sure everything looks really good. So the last thing is I noticed we don't have any caps on our, uh, on our ports here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these ports or these caps here. These are quarter inch refrigerant safety locking caps. So if you guys are familiar with uh, code locking caps, they typically take a funky tool that you always lose. These are made by Subco by their uh, Trade Fox line. And these to me are just a lot better. So um, they're not crazy colors, which not, not a huge deal. But the main thing is it uses a standard um, service wrench to um, install and remove. So, you know, we always have this on our bag. And uh, to me, these are just a, a much better way to go. So anyhow, I got these. I'm going to go ahead and install these, uh, get those locked on. And we're pretty much ready to go. All right, so that pretty much wraps up today's video. I just wanted to show you the process on how I clean an indoor coil, an outdoor coil, the tools, and just you know the entire process of um, how I like to do things. Obviously, there are multiple ways to do all types of things, repairs, processes like this, but this is just mine. So anyhow, I hope you guys got something out of this process. Um, if you're interested in any of the tools that I use, I'll make sure that I leave a link down in the description for you, so, but, that's it for today. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, see you guys later.